Uh, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I want to thank Nikos uh, and the organizers of this conference for inviting me um, here. Now, uh, the title of my uh, talk is Making Sense of the Turkish Soviet Social Discontent. A possibility for, is there a possibility for uh, transgressing uh, roadblocks? Now, as you are probably following and well aware, uh, there has been a series of um, strike actions in, 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 uh, in the North, and, and es essentially uh, three rallies uh, last year, which uh, is telling us something really important about the Turkish Soviet uh, discontent. Now, um, the question that I will be raising uh, today, and uh, of course try, try to answer, is how can we really make sense of this discontent? Um, is it a typical reaction to austerity measures? And in that sense, um, it's uh, similar to its reactions taken uh, elsewhere. Is it possible to talk about uh, the extension of a spillover uh, effect from the uprisings in uh, Tunisia? You don't hear? Yeah, it's okay. Um, so, are we talking about uh, the extension of a spillover effect from the uprisings in Tunisia, Egypt, Yemen, or uh, the discontent in the north of the island? Does it have much more uh, peculiar dynamics? So this is one of the questions that I will be uh, discussing. And secondly, how does the current discontent uh, compare to the mobilizations of 2002-2004 that culminated in a predominant yes uh, uh, to the ANA Because uh, 2004 um, and why why the Turkish Cypriots accepted the Anan Plan, UN Anan Plan? Well, it was a result of series of uh, again uh, this uh, series of discontents, uh, and I'll try to kind of compare this uh, current discontent with uh, that period. And I'm going to ask um, ask this uh, question: whether there uh, in the current discontent are there traces of an overall disillusionment? system that will trigger a process that will contribute to a reunification of the island. So these are the questions that I'll be uh, discussing. Now, I think on one level, uh, what is happening in the North is uh, quite universal in the context of the global crisis, global economic crisis. Uh, so it's in a way, it's uh, the impact of the 2007 uh, global crisis. We all know that since 1970s, the global economy is experiencing a downturn and the current crisis is the most uh, severe manifestation of this downturn. Now, the fact that the global economy has been suffering from uh, falling rates of profit since 1970s meant that liberal measures uh, such as increased labor flexibility, curbing real wage gains, and um, breaking a linkage between productivity gains and annual wage improvements has been the underlying logic of capitalist strategies all across the world. So what I'm um, suggesting is that, in that sense, there's a continuity uh, between what's happening in the North with uh, the other events that we have seen uh, all across uh, Europe, and also, um, it, although I'm not reducing what's happening in the Middle East to, to, to this uh, as, a, as a reaction to the global crisis, I think the global crisis had a significant impact on this process, in the sense that the, fa um, the governments have much less revenue coming in thanks to the crisis, which meant that it became very difficult for governments to appease the masses uh, through welfare state concessions, which further contributed to restlessness in the streets uh, in Middle East as well as in Europe. So in that sense, I think the current discontent in the North uh, shall be contextualized uh, in the general uh, framework of a uh, global crisis, and hence government's inability to meet the demands uh, of the public. Now, if you go back, uh, if you focus on the North uh, Cyprus uh, discontent, uh, the rallies that were uh, organized in 2011, which uh, thousands of people have gathered in the streets of Nicosia, they were tri triggered by uh, austerity measures that were put in place to cut the budget deficit and bring in uh, public finances. And as typical of most austerity measures, all austerity measures that we see um, implemented across the world, it, it, it included um, you know, cutting the budget deficit and bringing in uh, public finances by reducing the public sector, slashing salaries and privatization of state economic enterprises, including some strategic sectors such as electricity operators and uh, telecom. 
Now, um, according to the governing party in Turkey, AKP, um, the key diagnosis of the problems of the Turkish Cypriot economy is uh, a cumbersome state, uh, and this uh, diagnosis uh, obviously leads to um, economic measures that are aiming at privatization and the limitation of uh, public expenditure. Now, there's another problem here. We're not only talking about uh, privatizations, but we're talking about rather dodgy privatizations. Uh, for example, there has been a series of attempts, and more than attempts, to privatize key state organizations. And uh, these organizations are most often uh, like owned by uh, uh, AKP-oriented capital groups which further increased the tension between Turkey and a significant se section of the Turkish Cypriot uh, community. For example, in an interview uh, with the Turkish Fort uh, Fortune magazine, uh, the ambassador of Turkey to the TRNC, Halim Ibrahim Akça, described Turkey as the IMF uh, of uh, Northern Cyprus, which was uh, heavily criticized uh, in, the, uh, in the North. But on the other hand, this declaration that Turkey uh, is the IMF of uh, North Cyprus explicitly revealed how Turkey looks at uh, the economy of uh, Northern Cyprus. So on the one hand, um, this, um, we, we, we kind of have to uh, accept that uh, this uh, reactions against austerity measures in a way that we see in most other parts of the world. But nevertheless, um, the specific dynamics behind uh, the Cypriot uh, discontent shall not be uh, ignored. Uh, firstly, the discontent cannot be reduced to a reaction against the austerity measures uh, only. Uh, the fact that the TRNC has a dependency relationship with Turkey, and it is Turkey that is pushing for austerity measures, adds a political dimension to the discontent in the sense that uh, the desire on the part of significant sections of the protesters is not only to achieve economic independence from Turkey, but also uh, political independence as well. Um, I think we have reached a very interesting uh, moment in the relations between <coughs> the TRNC and Turkey. Uh, and since Turkey's military intervention, whatever you call it, in 1974, which led to the de facto partition of the island, the relationship between uh, the Turkish Cypriot community and the motherland has never been probably so sore. Uh, Turkey is criticized uh, for creating an administration in North Cyprus that is entirely dependent on Turkey itself in political and uh, financial terms. Now, as we all know, Turkey's intervention in 74 was created by the vast majority of Turkish Cypriots uh, with jubilation and relief. But today, an increasing number of Turkish Cypriots is frustrated by uh, Turkey's overpowering uh, presence. And as uh, OBP, the, the governing party uh, in the North, is embarking on a neoliberal uh, package of austerity, it can no longer incorporate uh, the Turkish Cypriot middle classes and neighbor aristocracy who are feeling the, uh, the squeeze. Now, recent research uh, shows that uh, their presence and role is uh, gradually being eroded. Turkish Cypriot workers in the public sector are feeling the pressure of being unemployed or the curtailing of their rights in an economy where insecure working conditions prevails as a norm in labor relations uh, with uh, the private sectors. So essentially, we're talking about um, uh, this content that is uh, uh, like led by economic concerns, but it also has this uh, clear uh, political uh, dimension to it. Now, who, is, um, who are the main agents who are basically leading this discontent? Uh, the Turkish Cypriot discontent is led by trade unions, mostly in the public sector, that are connected to political parties of the left. But disillusionment is increasingly drawing support from all walks of life, including some political groups on the traditional uh, pro anti right of the ideological uh, spectrum. So what is, um, now uh, I'll be discussing uh, the second uh, issue that I raised in the, in, in the introduction. How does the current discontent uh, compare to the discontent of 2002-2004, which eventually led, uh, culminated in a yes vote uh, to uh, the Anarcha? Why am I taking this as something important? Well, because it, I think it was a very important turning point in the Turkish Cypriot history. Imagine just three years before, in 2000, Turkish Cypriots predominantly elected uh, the late uh, president, uh, nationalist president, uh, Deltaş. And only in uh, three years' time, we're talking about a significant win change uh, in the Turkish Cypriot community, and they have decided uh, to elect uh, JTF, the left, uh, the key party of the center left. 
and hence uh, Talak was elected as a president. So why did this uh, significant uh, change happen, shift happen? Uh, I, I think uh, it is really related to the economic discontent uh, that has happened uh, before. Obviously, um, there were other reasons, like the Lois Yudu case uh, was a significant um, black milestone as well. People realized they just couldn't get away by using a very stupid uh, property anymore. It was not uh, accepted by the international law. So the problems with uh, the, the, the state, uh, the TRNC, the state formation, uh, was surfacing more and more. But what happened in uh, like the 2000s, which, uh, which further made this, uh, like ex exposed this, uh, fragility of, of the TRNC, let's say. Now, um, so the, the, the question that I'm raising is, as I said, how does the current uh, content compare to the mobilizations of 2002, 2004? Um, now, there are striking resemblances between the two periods, as well as differences. Just like the current one, the discontent of the early 2000s <coughs> was uh, triggered by uh, economic uh, reasons. A banking crisis erupted in uh, December 1999, and it led to six banks uh, coming under government control. Later, four of these banks were caused by the decision of uh, council ministers, and following the banking crisis, Prime Minister Dervish Erdogan's uh, government uh, sought financial aid uh, from Turkey. But Turkey wasn't really willing to uh, provide unconditional support, and instead she imposed uh, an economic austerity package that met a widespread resistance on the part of op opposition parties, trade unions, as well as the business uh, community. Now, as a result of this opposition, the government could not uh, implement the package, which led to a shortage of funds, the consecutive delay in the payment of salaries in the public sector, and the suspension of payment of compensation to the victims of the banking crisis, contributed to the increasing discontent within the Turkish Soviet uh, community. Now, Turkey decided not to uh, bear Turkish costs in, in 2000, but a year later, uh, its own financial crisis erupted in 2001, and the combined effect of these two crises uh, turned out to be diminished uh, possibilities uh, for the Turkish Soviet government uh, courting, uh, to contain discontent and envisioning of political alternatives through the traditional instruments of patronage and clientelism. So this was a system that was set up after 1974. It was essentially a system based on uh, like uh, sharing the, the, war spo the spoils of war. And then the great point is that there came a moment uh, that they realized the system can't go on anymore because it's, uh, economically speaking, it's not viable anymore. Now, so this inability on the part of the government brought forth a significant attitudinal uh, change towards the settlement of the Cyprus problem and the EU on the part of the Turkish Cypriots. In an environment where the economic crisis not only curbed uh, the distributive capacity of the state, but also generated social unrest, the Anand plan with its prospect of immediate, immediate uh, membership of the EU constituted a promising uh, alternative for a new a concrete social project to replace uh, the different uh, political economic uh, structure. Um, so, so the question that we need to ask is uh, today: What's happening today? I mean, uh, now, as I was talking to you uh, today, I uh, I live in the north of Cyprus, and I uh, was uh, trying to come here. And uh, I realized these uh, huge uh, dustbins, and, and as you know, like months and months, uh, municipality workers are on a strike because of uh, serious disputes uh, with, uh, with the, that they're not being paid uh, their salaries for, for months and months. So um, if, you, if you ever have the chance to part with an art, you'll have the chance that it's a bit like uh, Britain's middle of discontent, but this is a very, uh, like a, 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 a discontent that went on for months and months and perhaps a few years. So the question that I, I and, and most of my uh, colleagues are asking, uh, what, what is this disillusionment or what is this uh, discontent uh, supposed to mean? Um, is it possible to, to kind of, is there potential to challenge this discontent into an overall dissolution of the system in a way to contribute to a unification of the island? Because that's precisely what I thought uh, had happened after 2003. 
uh, people became uh, increasingly more and more unhappy with the system, and so they realized, well, this can't go on anymore. We have to, uh, like, we have created the state, and so far, since, since 74, we've been living in our own world, but there come, comes a moment this is not viable anymore. So are we, are we seeing a, a similar kind of sentiment on the part of Turkish Cypriots? And more importantly, what does this mean? Now, of course, it's never really possible to guess the course of social events due to contingencies, but we can observe that certain factors that were existent in the first half of the 2000s is not there anymore. Now, there was more of an optimism uh, prevailing within the Turkish Cypriot community regarding the positions of different uh, parties to the conflict, whether it's Republic of Cyprus, Turkey, Greece, or US. And it was believed that uh, the 2004 was a historic moment in terms of bringing so many rare factors together. Nowadays, though, there's no such uh, optimism. Now, I believe the main uh, difference today uh, is uh, lack of a promising alternative for a new concrete uh, social uh, project that manifested itself as a political settlement and consecutive EU membership in the first half of the 2000s. Now, first of all, uh, Turkey Cypriots have a series of disappointments since, uh, since 2004. Uh, there's serious disillusion with the peace process, and there is a widespread belief that the Greek Cypriots are not interested in a solution other than granting them minority status in the Republic of Cyprus. They are also uh, disappointed with left-wing parties as uh, credible alternatives because unfortunately, when the left-wing parties were in power, they invariably adopted similar neoliberal economic policies, and in fact, these factors were precisely uh, what have uh, uh, what, what can be seen as, as, as explanations for the return of the hardliner OBP in 2009, uh, which paved the way for the election of the party's leader to the presidency in 2010. So uh, the question that is uh, widely asked uh, these days, um, what shall be done in these circumstances? Um, I mean, I didn't have much time to go into that, but uh, there's some kind of a crisis going on on a, on a political party level. Uh, I'm sure uh, lots of you, uh, most of you are, are aware. Basically, uh, the governing party is unable to uh, decide who, who uh, their, their leader is uh, due to uh, some internal uh, disputes. So the, the question is, what shall be done, and who, who are the agents uh, to kind of uh, come forward uh, and, and to carry out the strategy? Now, certain unions like uh, Secondary Education Union, Cyprus Turkish Public Service Union, uh, and Cyprus Turkish Teachers Union are at the front or, uh, forefront of the protest movements, and they have links with, as well as tensions, with the parties of the center left, the JTP and uh, TDP. Um, I think, I mean, even though there are certain uh, attempts uh, like formulated by parties and, and, and unions, the key problem is a, a coherent strategy that will mobilize masses not only towards the rejection of austerity measures and the rigging messaging of an alternative economic policy, but also a settlement of the Cyprus problem. This is not formulated yet. So uh, I think this is really the greatest challenge uh, ahead for uh, progressive forces in the North. Um, like uh, coming to power is not enough. Uh, they have to have alternative strategies and projects. Uh, so far, this is a big challenge, and um, it, it seems as one of the greatest challenges ahead, uh, as far as I can see. Thanks. Uh, Thank you very much for as well. I thought that uh, perhaps. Uh, the refers to, to the best material that uh, at least uh, I'm not very much aware of, uh, or do not like to think of the reality as that moving on the relevance of political economy. Uh, the idealism nowadays seems to obfuscate the, the importance of that uh, in, in various forms uh, and in levels of analysis. Now, uh, we have about 10 minutes of question and answer period, so uh, maybe. Yes, but already, but it is the next so, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree with you <coughs> about the disillusionment of the Turkish Cypriots in June 2012, um, about the process of a solution and the disillusionment of the left. But to which extent do you think the disarray that the, the South, is seen right now uh, affects 
the, 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 pers the perspective of, of the Turkish Cypriots. I mean, like Andres Panagiotis said yesterday, for the Turkish Cypriots to visit the South, it looked like going into the future. Uh, it looked as if it was a solution for a stubborn situation that they had. But now that the, the South is in it, has its own problems, and it, we don't know as where, which way are going to be in the next few years. How, how does this affect the Turkish Cypriots? I mean, it doesn't look like a very appealing solution. Even if there was prospects for a, for a, a settlement of the problem, I mean, I wouldn't bother the, the way we are right now. Well, I guess it's about choosing between two evils, right? Uh, are you going to go for austerity measures pushed by Turkey or for, for pushed by Troika? I mean, it's like if you, you choose like one of the one of the two evils. And uh, on that respect, in that respect, I understand what you're saying, but I think you can't you can't really capture the situation in the north just on this basis. Uh, there, there, there are lots of issues going on in the north right now. Uh, you know, um, like Turkish Cypriots more and more feel that uh, their bill is not. Uh, you, you can't really control most of the institutions. Uh, there's not much of a. Uh, on, on many levels, you feel uh, you know the, the overarching like existence of, of Turkey. But oh, I'm not talking about. The, the current problem we have at the moment is with the, the, the government in Turkey, which is really ruthless uh, in its own ways of dealing uh, with, I mean, if you're following what's going on with the Kurds, uh, I think they're one of the worst combinations that I could ever think of. Uh, Neoliberal, conservative, uh, now they're also playing to the uh, walls of the nationalists because, uh, you know, they, they would like to uh, win, the, and, and, and the prime minister is constantly talking about bringing back uh, the capital capital punishment. So uh, imagine uh, being uh, like uh, controlled by such kind of a, a government. And we do feel this uh, in our everyday life uh, on, on, a, on every level, I can tell you. So this is this is something uh, very important. And, and, and I'm on the left, and I have always been uh, rather critical of the EU project. But I think you need to look at things case by case. And in this case, I, I, I thought in 2004 a solution in Cyprus uh, uh, followed by uh, you know EU membership was the best possible uh, you know option. But uh, we, I'm not idealizing it. But it's just as I said, choosing between different evils. Um, yeah, hi. Um, uh, who do you believe uh, benefits from the ongoing occupation of northern Cyprus on a financial level? So I can't hear you. Um, who do you believe uh, benefits on a financial level uh, from the ongoing occupation of Northern Cyprus? Is it the uh, local um, business people or is it people from Turkey? I don't know. And how does that affect politics? Okay, so who is benefiting from, from the statistical? Oh, okay. Well, um, a number of people have benefited from the Cisco. Uh, I, I think one reason the system went on until uh, these days because, you know, uh, if you look at the right wing parties, they were precisely the ones, uh, like uh, even when after, right after 1974, in deciding who would get the best uh, Greek Cypriot houses, it was all people, you know, and uh, the, the, the uh, TMT, uh, like basically the key cadres of the nationalist movement. And later on, these people have also benefited hugely uh, from the system because it was not only uh, about sharing spoils of war, but also properties, big separate properties, etc. Uh, and they are still uh, continuing with that. And also, if you think about the, the Turkish Cypriot bourgeoisie, which is mostly commercial bourgeoisie that we're talking about, they're not in a position to um, compete in the external world, even though in 2002 they were kind of more embracing the solution because. Uh, one of my friends is talking about some kind of an internal division within the bourgeoisie as well. One group that would be much more willing to kind of export to the uh, uh, government. But traditionally, what was happening was the Turkish Cypriot bourgeoisie always um, benefited from this protectionist measures like a, a closed economy. And they were the ones who were uh, supporting these right wing parties who essentially, you know, uh, wanted to continue the system. So. Uh, these, like, I would say, Turkish Cypriot bourgeoisie, uh, the, the, the key nationalist cadres, and also people have lost out from the system as well, you know. 
Uh, I know people who haven't been given jobs for years and years just because they're uh, left wing. Uh, and this is in, in one level, on one level, still continuing today. <clears throat> But, uh, okay, go ahead, and then there's one more question on the back. Uh, okay. uh, given that uh, the traditional uh, progressive parties in the South uh, were calling for uh, uh, unification first, and then socialism, and looking at the unification project first, and then looking at establishing a socialist uh, strategy, uh, how utopian do you think, how utopian do you think that there could be a strategy of uh, unification through socialist strategies of forces between South and North? Um, it is a utopia I, I really like, uh, I shall tell. I mean, uh, it, it is a utopia I could really close myself, but frankly speaking, um, when I observe, uh, it's been four or five years since I came back to this country, I was abroad for a few years. Um, I'm observing there's less and less of us uh, who's sharing this utopia. So um, I think in these kind of circumstances, uh, <laughs> being realistic does I mean, uh, or it's it's not I don't like saying uh, this word not being realistic, but we need to come up with the strategies that is going to work in the current uh, circumstances, and we we are well aware of the balance of forces right in both communities. So I think rather than um, coming up with a strategy that is doomed for failure. I mean, I wouldn't really mind a social democratic uh, reformist uh, solution if this is going to work in these current circumstances. And for example, in the North right now, one of the things that we're discussing, uh, like amongst the left-wing parties, some parties uh, are, are talking about a complete boycott of the political system. And I don't really believe this is uh, the way it shall be taken. I think uh, still reformist uh, solution, you know, to the parties, to the parliament. Regardless of the fact that you're going to legitimize the state, yes, that's fine, but I don't think you can really leave the state entirely on its own. I mean, I believe this uh, 1970s slogan, you have to uh, like struggle within the state and against the state. But you, you can't leave, really leave within the state because it's it's people's life at stake here, right? Privatizations, people lose their jobs, they have to migrate, and uh, the, the number of suicides have gone significantly up uh, in the north uh, in the last couple of years because people are really struggling on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think, um, even though I believe in this uh, open strategy, in the current circumstances with the balance of forces, I'm fine with a reform solution. <laughs> That's uh, an answer to your question. There was one more question on the back, and uh, perhaps then we can move on to the next lecture. Uh, somebody, somebody has the uh, well, front. Not really. I already inspired. I already inquired, but it's not the case. So. No. Intervention is what is for it. Invasion is for it. Intervention. 
sorry, as uh, as the coordinator of this conference, uh, kind of if you want to improve the conversation, you may have to do so outside. Now it's a question that you are posing and not a comment, right? It's, it's a, a question. question. My yes. question so is, go ahead with the question. how can one speak about intervention and at the same time say that, um, uh, talk about the Lozito case and acknowledge that it is stolen land? Do you steal land through intervention? Do you kill people through intervention? Do you take people's houses through intervention? And how can we possibly <clears throat> come together as left-wing people if we have such a huge discrepancy between us? Um, okay, I'll, I'll answer this. Look, I understand your um, uh, criticism, but I have a serious problem with these explanations, uh, these Greek Cypriot uh, explanations that entirely start the whole process uh, with Turkey's occupation, whatever you call it. It just didn't happen just out of, like, out of, out of this. Now, if you're willing to accept what has left, led to uh, Turkey's occupation, I'm, I'm, I'm really fine with uh, like, I'm, uh, really accepting this. And we really need to um, like, uh, talk about what had happened uh, before 1974, what has happened between 1963 and 74. Uh, the, the, the coup d'etat against uh, Makayos, and, and as a result, uh, Turkey uh, has come in. But if you're entirely starting this circle process, like most official uh, narratives would do, Turkey came and occupied uh, the north of the island. Turkish Greeks, uh, Turkish Cypriots, and Greek Cypriots were really friendly. I don't really credit that uh, explanation because I don't think it's the right uh, explanation. I mean, look, uh, I've been very critical uh, of, of, of Turkey's uh, position. I'm always <coughs> like that, right? But we, we shouldn't really uh, live in this uh, really rosy, uh, dreamy world. Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots were really good friends. They had really good friends. And it's entirely uh, British, Turkish, and, and Greek Cypriot, uh, Greece uh, that kind of intervened and uh, basically uh, sort like uh, undermined this peaceful relationship. Because I think we have to attribute agency to, to the Cypriot agents, right? It was Greek Cypriots themselves who have set up AOKA. It was the Turkish Cypriots themselves who have set up TNT. And as long as you acknowledge that responsibility of the Cypriots, I'm more than happy of, of, of acknowledging the responsibility of Turkey, and I always do in my day-to-day -day, uh, you know, uh, thing. But not really, uh, essentially, um, to be uh, like frank, because we are speaking, uh, we, what really annoys me is every time uh, I'm coming here, and most of my Turkish civil uh, colleagues, we're anyway clashing with the establishment in the north, but I expect the same understanding from my Greek Cypriot colleagues. They have to also question at least the official narratives and you know, not, don't come with these kind of uh, accusatory tones because it's not really working.